Hi everyone, welcome to Gateway Lectures. Here we have the solution for the quiz day 5. This is our first question and today's subject is machine tools. And this is our first question. A parting line has a ground front clearance angle. So what is a ground front clearance angle? Front clearance angle is nothing but the end clearance angle. Ground mean it is with respect to the ground. Nothing but with respect to the base. And the back rake angle is 12 degrees. Yes, we know what uh, we all know what is actually back rake angle. That is given as 12 degrees. The tool. So these two angles, what the specification for the tool? They will not change for the tool. Once the tool is ground, these angles will be fixed. They will not change. Next, the tool by mistake was set 1.5 mm above the line of center while measuring job. So while measuring a job of out uh, 80 mm outer diameter. So we are doing a outside uh, machining on the outer diameter and it is, the diameter was given as 80 mm and here it is said that the job instead of placing along the center height it was placed 1.5 mm above the line of center okay then they are asking to calculate find the effective rake angle and effective clearance angles find the diameter of job at which while parting so we are performing a parting operation the tool will start rubbing so the, we, we need to calculate the diameter at which the tool starts rubbing okay so first we will know what actually is uh, the situation given in the question so generally this is our this is our tool uh, sorry this is our workpiece on which we are uh, do, going to do our turning or parting or facing operation and this is our single point cutting tool okay when we place our single point cutting tool this line coincides this is called the center line and this line is called as base plane base plane for the tool for the tool that is the base plane and the the point at which they both are in contact are called tool workpiece contact point and at the tool workpiece point of contact point they will they will pass base plane and also a tangent the tangent uh, the tangent is called as it is called as base plane tangent or tool workpiece in the contact point tangent so this is a tangent here so how we will define the angles here okay we will see this so this is our single point cutting tool and this is called our base plane and this is the tangent at the point of in uh, contact between the tool and workpiece and this line is the rake face it is a line parallel to the rake face and here we will define the angles this angle is called as back rake angle alpha and this angle is called as front clearance angle or end clearance angle and this is called as end clearance angle generally it is denoted by c okay and in our question these both values are given alpha is given as 12 degrees and c is given as 8 degrees so this is the actual position to, to which we need to place the tool and uh, start our parting operation. But what uh, the operator, the machinist that does was, he by mistake places the tool 1.5 mm above the center height, above the center line. So now this becomes our base plane and this is our center line. Right. Now again we need to draw a common tangent and normal at that point. So here. Here, this is our normal and a line perpendicular to the normal is tangent. Okay, this is our normal and this is our tangent. This is normal and this is tangent. But the same we can apply here, here also. But the thing here is the alpha and C are not actually the same at that point. So here alpha and c are not actually the same which uh, it was in this case so how this alpha and c were changing here now if you can observe here at this point this is our base plane this line is our base plane so the angle to which it this makes is the alpha actual nothing but this alpha and here at this point this is the common tangent and this angle between the end phase and 
द कॉमन टेंजेंट एट दैट पॉइंट इज सी एक्चुअल सो दीज वर द एक्चुअल एंगल्स बट नाउ वेल मशीनिंग वॉट वर द एंगल्स यूज हियर इन मशीनिंग दिस एंगल इज कॉल्ड एज आलफा एफेक्टिव वील सी वाई वी यूज आलफा एफेक्टिव एंड दिस एंगल इज कॉल्ड एज सी एफेक्टिव एंड हियर दिस एंगल इज सेट टू बी टीटा सिंस इट इज प्लेस वन पॉइंट फाइव एम 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 एफ ओ द सेंटर लाइन द कॉमन नॉर्मल विल रोटेट बाई एन एंगल ऑफ टीटा ओके बाई रोटेटिंग द कॉमन कॉमन नॉर्मल हियर द आलफा एफेक्टिव इज नॉट इक्वल टू आलफा एक्चुअल एंड सी एफेक्टिव इज नॉट इक्वल टू सी एक्चुअल वील कैलकुलेट हाउ दे विल बी अपटेन बट इनिशियली फर्स्ट वी नीड टू नो वॉट इज द सिग्निफिकेंस ऑफ आलफा एफेक्टिव एंड सी एफेक्टिव सपोज वी हैव दिस दिस सिंगल पॉइंट कटिंग टूल दिस सिंगल पॉइंट कटिंग टूल वी हैव विच इज हैविंग ए रेक एंगल ऑफ ट्वेल्व डिग्रीज वी नो द सिग्निफिकेंस ऑफ रेक एंगल द चिप फ्लोज ओवर द रेक एंगल एंड एट सम पॉइंट इट ब्रेक्स मोर द एंगल मोर द आलफा इट हैज ईजियर विल बी द ब्रेकिंग ऑफ द चिप सपोज वी आर मेशनिंग सम मोर डक्टाइल मेटीरियल देर वी आर गेटिंग ए कंटिन्यूस चिप सो वी नीड टू ब्रेक इट एज सुन एज पॉसिबल बट अवर सिंगल पॉइंट कटिंग टूल इज हैविंग ट्वेल्व डिग्री रेक एंगल वी नीड समवेयर अराउंड फोर्टीन और फिफ्टीन डिग्री रेक एंगल सच दैट दैट चिप कैन बी ईजीली ब्रेक इन बट वॉट वी विल डू इन दिस केस इज वेदर वी नीड टू change this tool and place a tool which is having a rake angle of 15 or 14 degrees okay but that will take some time and also tool changing cost will be involved we need to regrind some other tool make that alpha of uh, 14 degrees or 15 degrees everything cost involves but a simple method we can do effectively here is we can just shift the tool by an offset or else rotate the tool by an angle of theta so that we obtain an effective angle of 14 or 15 degrees here the what alpha effective we are talking about this alpha active effective and this c effective both were for both will do an advantage for us instead of changing the tool with the same tool itself with the same tool of having our actual alpha as 12 degrees we can perform the function we can just shift it by an offset of 1.5 mm thus here uh, removing chips will be easier now because the alpha here is not the actual heating here the alpha is alpha effective and that alpha effective is something different than alpha actual now we need to calculate what is that alpha effective okay and this angle here between the new no, new uh, tangent and the old tangent is this angle this angle is theta and here the angle between here the angle between new normal and the old normal this is our old normal and this is our new normal and this angle is theta okay now from that diagram here observing this diagram here observing this diagram we can write few statements by observing the diagram the alpha effective can be written as alpha actual plus theta and also the c effective nothing but the clearance angle effective or you can be written as c actual minus theta so if you can observe c actual is more c effective is less means c effective is decreased by an angle of theta here alpha effective is more alpha actual is less and alpha effective is increased by theta okay and this is our final conclusion but we don't know what is the value of theta that we can simply calculate observe the triangle o a b this was the triangle o a b this is our o this is a and this is b this ab distance is nothing but the offset of 1.5 mm and this ob is nothing but the radius of the work piece In the question the diameter was given 80 mm so our radius now will be 40 mm okay and this is our angle theta by which our common normal rotates by placing the angle placing the work piece at an offset of 1.5 mm and now here we can apply sin theta sin theta is equal to 
1.5 upon 40. From that we can get the value of theta as 2.149 degrees. So theta was known. Now we can calculate easily alpha effective. Alpha effective is nothing but alpha actual plus theta. Alpha actual was given as 12 degree plus theta is 2.149. Then we will get the answer as 14.149 degrees. This is our answer for alpha effective. And the clearance effective, C effective is C actual minus theta. C actual was given as 8 degrees. So 8 minus 2.149 that we will get it as 5.851 degrees and this is our answer for c effective and one more thing was asked find the diameter of job at which while parting the tool will start rubbing see here the tool is having some clearance in this case in this case if you can observe the tool is having some clearance here in this place but as soon as it starts entering into the as soon as it starts entering into the workpiece since it is at an offset at some uh, diameter the tool starts rubbing with the workpiece when will the tool start rubbing actually the tool rubbing is avoided by placing some clearance angle but when will the tool start rub when the clearance angle is zero therefore when the c effective is zero the tool starts rubbing tool starts rubbing right so now we need to calculate the diameter at which the tool starts rubbing so with the same 1.5 mm uh, offset from the center o and here this is our theta when will our c effective be zero what is c effective c actual minus theta so c effective is c actual minus theta that should be equal to zero therefore our theta should be equal to the c actual that is nothing but 8 degrees so when the theta is 8 degrees the tool starts rubbing so we will place the angle theta 8 degrees and here we will calculate the new r dash that is nothing but the diameter at which the radius at which the tool starts rubbing ok again we will apply sin theta is equal to 1.5 upon r dash from here and theta is nothing but 8 degrees substitute that we will get the value of r dash as 10.777.9448 mm and then the diameter new diameter of rubbing will get it as 21.56 mm and this is our answer for rubbing diameter nothing but the diameter of the job at which while parting the tool starts rubbing okay the first question was finished now we'll enter the second question the length of the fixed link of a crank and slotted lever mechanism is 250 mm and that of the crank is 100 mm if the length of the slotted lever is 450 mm then the length of the stroke of the shaper is so in shaper we'll be using actually two types of mechanisms one will be slotted lever mechanism nothing but slotted lever quick written motion mechanism and the other is Whitworth quick written motion motion mechanism we in Whitworth we will be having some uh, defects actually some negative some uh, disadvantages so we are been using in shaping we are using slotted lever quick written motion mechanism this uh, slotted lever slotted lever quick written mechanism is an inversion of this slotted lever quick written me mechanism in is inversion of single slider this completely we will be discussing in theory of machines once we enter the concept series of theory of machines we are actually awaiting uh, to get more subscribers so that we can start concept series and much can be learned from there so initially we are doing some quiz questions inversion of single slider mechanism single slider crank mechanism okay this is an inversion and the derivation to this uh, length of the stroke and complete details of this mechanism will be dealing in the concept series or else you can watch uh, one of the video uploaded today about this uh, derivation in the same gateway youtube channel and I am directly writing to save the time for this uh, solutions uh, video 
we are directly making a solution there we will discuss we will derive the formula how we will get the formula for length of stroke okay so we will do it now we will do the solution now length of stroke stroke is nothing but either forward or return both were same both length will be the same for forward and backward or the forward and return so the length of the stroke can be written as two times length of slotted liver into length of crank the whole divided upon length of connecting rod here we said the, this uh, slotted liver quick rate motion mechanism is an inversion for single sided uh, crank mechanism in that inversion what we something should be fixed some link should be fixed to make an inversion mechanism so here in sl slotted liver mechanism we fix the connecting rod okay the connecting rod is fixed this is our connecting rod okay this is a connecting rod and here the dimensions for everything was given the length of the fixed link is 250 mm so the length of the connecting rod is given as 250 mm and this is our slotted bar slotted bar or slotted rebel lever and the crank is and this is our crank and the crank length is given as 100 mm or the crank radius if the length of the slotted lever is 450 mm this is given as 450 mm then the length of the stroke of the shaper is we have already written the formula there in concept series or uh, the video uploaded today we will be discussing the derivation there you can watch the derivation and then solve this question it will be more easier and you can simply solve any type of question from this uh, slotted lever motion mechanism with which includes the angle quick return ratio and everything you just watch that video everything will be clear here 2 into length of the slotted lever the length of the slotted lever was given as 450 mm into the length of the crank the length of the crank was given as 100 mm that divided upon length of the connecting rod the length of the connecting rod here the question was given as 250 mm okay we will simply solve this answer will be 360 mm and here will be the working of crank and slotted lever quick return motion mechanism you can just observe the working the same will be presented in the concept series also this is our whatever part is sliding is our ram ram of the shaper to which our work piece will be held in shaper work piece will be given the reciprocating motion and the blue one is the slotted lever and the green circle is the crank crank which will be a crank and the crank pin will be sliding inside the slotted lever the forward motion will be performing very slowly it will take more time but the return motion is very fast if you can observe there the return motion is very quick that is why this mechanism is called as quick return motion mechanism the return stroke is very easy we can observe here now we'll enter the second question the sorry actual third question a through hole of 20 mm diameter is produced in a mild steel plate of thickness of 60 mm using a twist drill of 118 degree point angle with a feed of 0.3 mm per revolution and the cutting velocity of 50 meter per minute approach allowance is given as 3 mm and it is said at through hole and they are they are told to uh, calculate time for drilling in seconds and also the material removal rate we will take up the diagram here itself we will derive the formula and we will uh, do the solution this was the condition of through hole what is actually through hole whenever we are performing drilling there will be two types of holes to will be produced one will be the through hole and other will be the blind hole true hole will will be when 
we drill the complete thickness of the metal material whatever be the metal or a wood something we we drill completely into the material such that this is called the tip this part is called as the tip the tip completely uh, the tip starts coming out of the work piece after drilling so this is the drilled area this completely is drilled and here the tip comes out okay then it is said that a complete hole or a through hole is drilled when it is called as blind hole when we suppose we are drilling a wall we don't know till what depth we drill suppose we we were to insert a nail in the wall then we need to perform a drilling operation so initially we do drill we don't do drill to the complete uh, uh, width of the wall not the complete thickness of the wall you can't drill the complete thickness of the wall so we'll drill to some depth to which it is or up to our necessary to just a nail uh, nail a screw into it right that types of drilling where we don't know to what depth we need to uh, drill is called as blind hole and here it is a through hole it was given in the question and the plate was mild steel having thickness and the, and the plate was mild steel having thickness 60 mm and also the diameter of the hole is given nothing but the diameter of the drill the diameter of the hole will be nothing but the diameter of the drill actually there will be a very little clearance so here it is negligible actually so and the diameter of drill is given as 20 mm and also in the question approach allowance given approach allowance is nothing but we will just start drilling with some a uh, height above the work piece to avoid the uh, uh, resistance suppose we keep the drill point, drill bit on the work piece and start drilling it initially due to sudden impact there will there will be some uh, material uh, problems there will be some scratches on the material so initially we keep it above some height and then start our drilling uh, machine and slowly we will dig into the work piece so the height above which it the tool is placed is called as approach allowance and it is denoted by la and that is given in the question as 3 mm and the thickness of the work piece is given as 60 mm and the work piece is mild steel generally for mild steel when we use a twist point drill the angle nothing but the point angle of the drill bit is 118 degrees so point angle is denoted by alpha and it is given as 118 degrees what is exactly point angle suppose this is our drill this angle is called as point angle alpha so here this angle is called as point angle alpha and also for true hole we need to drill we need to get the point angle to the outside of the work piece so that it is said that the the complete thickness is drilled so to what distance we need to travel outside is given by compulsory approach nothing but xc i have denoted by xc so we will uh, uh, first of all la is known thickness is known and we will derive xc so how can we derive xc observe the triangle here a and this as b and here c observe the triangle abc this is our alpha by 2 nothing but half of the point angle and this is our radius of the drill okay we know r we know uh, this and this is bc is nothing but xc what we need to calculate so here we can apply tan alpha by 2 that is nothing but r r is nothing but d by 2 upon xc from that we can get the value of xc from that we can get xc as tan alpha by 2 sorry from that we can get xc as d by 2 upon tan alpha by 2 and the diameter in the question was given as 20 20 by 2 is nothing but 10 divided by tan of alpha is nothing but 118 degrees divided upon 2 from that we will get the value of xc as 6.0086 mm so xc was obtained now we need to calculate the total effective length to which the machining operation is performed so initially we have taken some approach and also we drilled a com complete thickness plus we also moved by distance of xc this is our effective length for which we perform the machining and approach was given as 3 mm thickness of the workpiece is 60 and 
the compulsory approach is 6.0086 mm so the l effective will obtain it as 69.0086 mm that was finished now we will need to calculate the machining time for drilling operation so t machining is nothing but l effective upon feed into rpm okay so l effective was known feed was given in the question 0.3 mm per revolution but n was not given how we can get value of n in the question cutting velocity was given cutting velocity of 50 meter per minute so whenever we have given the cutting velocity v we can write it as v is equal to pi dn upon 1000 okay why we have taken 1000 because d will be in mm to convert that into this and here v unit is meter per minute and here our n unit is revolution per minute so we need not convert this minute into seconds here because both the units were in minute no need to convert uh, no need to multiply or divide by any 60 value here so and this 1000 is for converting the diameter in mm to meter and from here we can get the value of n as v into 1000 upon pi d in the question v was given as 50 into 1000 upon pi into the value of d is given as 20 from that we will get the value of n as 17 795.7747 rpm that is the value of rpm if all the values were known we will calculate the machining time machine time is equal to l effective 16 point sorry 69.0086 mm upon f 0.3 mm per revolution into 795.7747 revolution per minute so here revolution revolution cancels mm mm cancels this minute will go into numerator so the final answer t machining we will get it as point two eight nine zero six minutes that is nothing but then the question it was asked in seconds so seventeen point three four three seven seconds this is our answer for the first part first part answer was obtained now we need to calculate the material removal rate whenever it is said that material removal rate it is always volume of material removed per unit time volume of material removed per unit time or per the time of for the time which for which we performed the remo material removal operation so volume of material removal per time volume of the material removal here is nothing but it is a cylindrical volume removed so pi by 4 d square into the thickness of the workpiece divided by what is the time required when it starts actual drilling operation which when it starts actual drilling operation is when the workpiece starts penetrating into the thickness and also when the workpiece finishes uh, machining the thickness so here we need to take only the thickness upon f into n so here we will get it as pi by 4 d square f into n that is a metal removal rate so therefore mrr is equal to pi by 4 d is nothing but given 20 mm 20 square into f is 0.3 mm per revolution into the value of n is 795.7747 rpm so we will get the final mrr as 75000 mm cube per minute since rpm revolution per minute the final answer will be in minutes mm cube per minute so the next answer was also obtained metal removal rate so we'll enter the next question for a gear milling operation on a circular bank 15 equal divisions has to be made using direct indexing mechanism uh, generally in milling uh, in milling machine we also perform gear milling where we'll place a circular blank and each time the cutter cuts one tooth single tooth each time once uh, we've cut the uh, one tooth we have to uniformly rotate the workpiece such that equal number of divisions are cut and the each tooth is having the same thickness so for that we use a mechanism called as indexing mechanism so generally indexing mechanism so generally indexing mechanism as per our syllabus there are divided into two types 
वन इज सिंपल इंडेक्सिंग एंड द अदर इज डायरेक्ट इंडेक्सिंग देर आर सम अदर इंडेक्सिंग मेकानिजम्स लाइक कॉम्पाउंड एंड मेनी अदर इंडेक्सिंग मेकानिजम्स आर अवेलेबल डिपेंडिंग अपॉन द नंबर ऑफ टूल्स टू बी कट एंड एवरी थिंग नंबर ऑफ स्लॉट्स नंबर ऑफ टीथ शू बी कट ऑन द गेयर सो इन सिंपल मेकानिजम वील बी यूजिंग ए गेयर रेशियो ऑफ सॉरी फोर्टी इज टू वन वील ऑल्सो डिस्कस वॉट एक्जैक्टली इज फोर्टी इज टू वन एंड इन डायरेक्ट इंडेक्सिंग मेकानिजम वी यूज ए गेयर रेशियो ऑफ ट्वेंटी फोर इज टू वन सो इन द क्वेश्चन द फर्स्ट वन इज वॉट इज द गेयर रेशियो टू बी यूज फॉर डायरेक्टिंग इंडेक्सिंग मेकानिजम द आंसर इज ट्वेंटी फोर इज टू वन एंड नेक्स्ट विच अमंग द फॉलोइंग इंडेक्सिंग प्लेट इज बेस्ट सूटेड देर वर द टू प्लेट्स गिवेन दे आर आस्किंग फॉर अवर गिवेन कंडीशन ऑफ फिफ्टीन इक्वल डिविजन वॉट विल इज द बेस्ट सूटेड so for this you need to understand the mechanism of indexing here due to limited time uh, source we are skipping the mechanism and things we will directly enter solving the question indexing is a very good uh, easy and also a good concept we will do it in cover it in concept series once we are into that so here to solve the question you just understand this whenever a work piece has to be our work piece nothing but the blank it is called as gear blank the gear blank on the complete gear blank we need to perform slotting operations so this is our complete gear blank suppose okay and this is our cutter sorry for this this is our cutter when our cutter rotates and whenever it hits this work piece it slowly removes layer by layer by layer by layer and it removes a complete uh, part complete part of the uh, gear blank and then it flow it it perf, uh, finishes like a slot here it performs a slot operation here okay so one part was finished one part was finished machining now the work piece has to be rotated so that the cutter again starts at some fresh place now the work piece starts rotating that it can't do it by itself so we perform an operation called indexing operation where we rotate the work piece by some angle so that the next part starts operation here thus this slot is also performed okay in that way all the complete divisions whatever divisions we need each time once the work piece finish one slot the work piece should be rotated so work piece should be rotated so for that here in our question it was said that we need to make 15 divisions if you are to make 15 divisions on the work piece or the 15 slots on the work piece the work piece has to be completely rotated one revolution right because we finished this again we'll move it by an angle we'll finish this again somewhere this somewhere this somewhere this in that complete manner we need only one revolution of work piece to come perform the complete operation so one revolution of work piece and we are using the direct indexing mechanism in our direct indexing mechanism the gear ratio is 24 is to 1 what does this 24 is to 1 mean for one revolution of the work piece our crank crank has to revolve 24 times on the index plate okay so that is 24 revolutions of crank is equivalent to one revolution of work piece so for performing gear uh, gear milling on the single work piece we need to perform 24 times the 24 times we need to ro rotate the crank on the indexing plate so here the uh, with this mechanism to this uh, mechanism to this work piece uh, there will be a mechanism situ uh, situated further there will be an indexing plate on the indexing plate uh, we will be having a crank and also a crank pin so each time and there will be holes on this circular plate that complete mechanism will shift uh, will discuss in concept series due to time limit here we are discussing only direct uh, numerical here so gear ratio is 24 is to 1 so 24 times this crank uh, indexing crank should be rotated in order to rotate the work piece sing one time so here for 15 divisions on work piece one revolution of work piece we need to rotate the crank by 24 times so 24 revolutions of crank 
then for one division so to, to make one division we need to make 1 by 15th revolution of the work piece nothing but 360 by 15 degrees we need to make that is nothing but 24 by 15 revolutions of the crank so the crank rotates on the index plate nothing but the whole circles so this 24 by 15 tells us which whole circle should be selected or which plate should be selected there will be several plates on that indexing mechanism so which plate should should be selected so how will you will we we'll do that so 24 by 15 can be written as 24 1 keep a 1 beside 24 minus 15 upon 15 that is nothing but 1 9 by 15 okay now whatever in the denominator 15 here you check in the options in the plates is there any 15 located see in the plate 1 the values are 21 23 26 27 29 31 32 so there is no 15 here even in the second plate there is no 15 so there is no plate which is having 15 but we can make a plate which is a multiple of 15 so uh, suppose uh, what are the multiples of 15 1 3 5 so we need to select a plate such that it should be a multiple of 1 3 and 5 right so we will take a plate which is having a multiple of 5 so for that what i will do is uh, this 1 and 9 by 15 i can um, simplify it and write as 3 by 5 so that can be written as 1 3 by 5 so now our denominator is 5 so we need to select a plate in which it should have a whole circle whole circle of a multiple of 5 see in the plate 1 21 23 26 27 29 31 32 mm, nowhere it is a multiple of 5 in the second plate 16 17 18 19 20 25 so here we are having two circle holes which is a multiple of 5 so we will select either one anything can be selected so for my purpose i am selecting 20 i have selected the 20 hole circle so if i select the 20 hole cycle if i need to get the denominator 20 here since i have selected 20 hole circle I need to multiply 4 and divide it by 4 then I will get it as 1 12 by 20 this is the final indexing type I need to do for this direct indexing what does this 1 12 by 20 indicate this crank pin to perform one division on the 20 hole circle it should make one complete revolution and also it should rotate one complete revolution on the 20 hole circle and also on the 20 hole circle it should leave 12 holes and enter into the 13th hole of the 20 hole circles so suppose this is our uh, indexing plate of 20 holes suppose this is our 20 holes let's suppose so to perform uh, one division so initially we are starting initially the miller will come it will cut one slot then the miller goes back now we need to rotate the workpiece by 1 by 15 nothing but 360 by 15 degrees so what we'll do is on the 20 hole circle we'll make one complete revolution of the crank pin and again come to this point and stop and then next on this whole circle we need to count 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 on the 12th hole again we'll place the pin by after finishing one complete ro rotation then we'll count 12 whole circles and we'll place the pin on 12th whole circle then this workpiece will rotate by 360 by 15 degrees okay in that way again we'll start the milling operation again it was finished again we'll perform the same one revolution one complete revolution of the crank pin on the 20 hole circle again on the 20 hole circle we'll count 12 circle and we'll leave 12 circles and place our pin on the 12th circle okay in that way we will do the indexing operation so the answer to the answers to the question is 24 is to 1 and which among the following indexing plate is the best plate 2 is the best next up fifth question a grinding wheel assigned as 50 uh, the sorry the grinding wheel designated as 51 a 40 l 12 v 23 is used for removing a layer of metal of depth 40 microns okay at a revolution per minute at an rpm of 3000 along 1 meter long slab with cutting force of 20 newton if the table feed is 1000 mm per minute and the width of cut is 25 mm then find first thing to find is specific cutting energy 
and second thing to find is grinding ratio and also the width of the grinding wheel was given as 25 mm and also there was a radial wear obtained on the grinding wheel it was given as 1 micron and the take wheel diameter as 170 mm we'll solve the question the designation given 51 a 40 l 12 v 1223 i'll just discuss here itself because there is nothing asked in the question about the designation just we will discuss what this designation means this 51 and this last number 23 are the manufacturer code manufacturer's code that company will have some code so we need not uh, uh, discuss about that manufacturing codes but main things were these five parameters inside so the first parameter a alphabet a denotes the type of abrasive used on the grinding wheel okay and here a denotes al203 so we discussed a and next number indicates 40 see where you can observe alphabet number alphabet number again alphabet so that is a series used here so next number is 40 what does the 40 indicate the 40 indicates the grain size and here according to the designation the 40 indicates the medium grain size that all you can refer a standard textbook there you can easily understand and here the next alphabet is l l indicates the hardness so first parameter is type of abrasive second parameter is the grain size and the third parameter is hardness so here l indicates mediumly hard grinding wheel and then again comes a number this number indicates structure and this structure as per this number 12 is open structure and next the next alphabet is v the v indicates the type of bond and v for vertified vertified bond vertified bond okay so here a indicates l203 40 indicates the grain size of 40 medium uh, hardness increase l l shows the hardness as medium 12 of 12 number 12 gives the structure as open structure and v indicates the type of the bond as vertified bond okay that is a designation you can refer some standard textbooks to understand what designation is and this is used for um, layer, removing a layer so the first thing asked is specific cutting energy in joule per meter cube so what i'll do is from the units i'll get the formula here joule per meter cube is the unit what i will do is divided by second on the numerator and denominator then what will you get joule per second is nothing but watt watt is nothing but power upon mm cube per second is nothing but material removal rate because per second is called as rate so mm cube per second is called as material removal rate mrr okay so here power actually what is the power power is nothing but force into velocity but here the force is the cutting force into the velocity nothing but the cutting velocity upon mrr so mrr what is the material removal uh, removal rate is nothing but we are performing a grinding operation right on the grinding operation width of the cut so width of the grinding wheel into depth of the cut so what the depth of cut we have given nothing it it also depends upon the type of the abrasive used into table feed table feed is denoted by vt okay and we are here in our question fc was known width was given as 25 mm depth of cut was given in the question as 40 microns nothing but 0.04 mm and vt nothing but table feed is also given in the question as 1000 mm per minute the only thing we need to know is velocity nothing but cutting velocity we already discussed v is equal to pi dn by 1000 in the previous question so v is equal to pi dn by 1000 and pi into the diameter of the grinding wheel is given as 170 mm into the speed is given as 3000 rpm upon 1000 from that we will get the value of cutting velocity as 1602.2 meter per minute okay so now fc is also known so fc was given as 20 newtons into the cutting velocity is 1602.2 mm per meter per minute upon b the value of width was given as 25 mm into the depth of cut is 40 microns nothing but 0.04 mm into vt table feed is given as 1000 mm per minute from this we will get the value of specific cutting energy in joule per meter cube as 32.045 joule per mm cube and this is our answer for the first thing
and the second thing which was asked in the question is grinding ratio so what exactly is grinding ratio we'll see grinding ratio grinding ratio is defined as volume of material removed grinding ratio is defined as volume of material removed volume of material removed upon volume of wheel wear nothing but grinding wheel wear so while performing grinding operation grinding wheel also will have some wear so we need to calculate both so this is our grinding wheel initially so after performing few grinding operations let it have obtained some wear and finally it reduced its radius okay so the initial radius was r i and the final radius was r f because while performing grinding operation the abrasives on this uh, outer diameter will get uh, pulled out of the grinding wheel okay thus the radius of the grinding wheel decreases such type of wear is called as radial wear and the, in the question the radial wear was given as 1 micron therefore r initial minus r final is given as r that is equal to 1 micron okay nothing but 0.001 mm so r initial was known in the question it was given so we need to calculate r final so r final is nothing but r initial minus r so r initial is 170 upon 2 nothing but 85 mm when a smaller radial wear is 0.001 so this comes out to be 84.999 mm we will also calculate volume of wheel wear volume of wheel wear is nothing but area of the wheel cross section into the width of the wheel area of the wheel cross section is circular since the cross section is circular we can write it as pi r initial square minus r final square into the width of the wheel okay and also next we got the volume of this volume of wheel wear now we'll calculate the volume of material removed volume of the material removed volume of material removed is nothing but length of the work piece so we'll perform grinding on some work piece right it will have some length it will have some width nothing but equal to the width of the grinding wheel uh, here is our grinding wheel okay this is our length of the work piece and we'll uh, we'll obtain some depth of cut using the abrasives so the volume of material removed is nothing but length into width of the work piece into depth of cut okay upon volume of wear is nothing but pi r initial square minus r final square into width of the work piece width of the work piece is nothing but equal to width of the grinding wheel so both b and w will be getting cancelled we'll substitute the remaining values so l was given in the question as 1001 meter nothing but 1000 mm into depth of cut is 40 micron so 0.04 mm upon pi into r initial square is 85 square minus r final is 84.999999 square okay and now by calculating this we'll get the grinding ratio as close to 75 this is our answer for grinding ratio Okay. in this way we can solve questions on machine tools machine tools is an easy subject in manufacturing manufacturing once you know the concept and formula everything will be very easy just you need to apply it apply that concept and formulas thanks for watching these were today's questions